Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. We're gonna take a break from software. I, I wanted to talk about some things going around in the software community the past two weeks that I think are very, very important for people to know as of right now, but they're also applicable for the next few years. First, there's a number of many, many affluent, famous, awesome software developers who are rallying against the whiteboard interviews. Whiteboard interview, if you're not aware, is when you go to an interview, they take in a whiteboard, normally an engineer's favorite tool to really communicate with other engineers and designers, project managers and clients and everything else. Fun way to brainstorm ideas. Instead, it's used to challenge you on algorithms that you may never have done before. If you, even if you went to computer science, you might not remember all the algorithms they taught you in school. Examples are bubble sort and things like that. Say, implement this algorithm on a board and they'll make you feel uncomfortable, you're writing code on the board, not in your favorite code editor on your computer. And a lot of people just hate them. They're not puzzle solvers or whatever else, or the environment is not normal where you normally code. You feel pressured, you don't feel supported, you feel kind of a negative challenging error wanting you to fail. It's not good all around. A lot of famous and smart and experienced programmers have had enough. Seeing very talented people get in these interviews and fail because of some criteria that has nothing to do with their ability or aptitude or history. Some of the candidates never even researched their GitHub. They said, well, you can't go on a whiteboard. Clearly you're not a software developer, even though there's 15 years of code that they've done. So I think it's easy to immediately look at that and go, you're right. It's awful. I should feel good about myself and rally against that. And I think that's wonderful. They are awful. However, you are not going to change reality. So you have three options. You can go to the job interview, say, oh, you want to use a whiteboard to challenge my skills? This is lame sauce. Peace out. Could be a really good job. They could have amazing software developers and they have nobody that cares about HR hiring, onboarding a new software developer. May not have even thought of it. They could be a small company. They might have hiring a new person once every six months. Who knows? That's not something that everyone goes every day like, I'm going to get better at this. What they do is like I do. They get, come in every day and want to get better at software. <laughs> not interviewing software people. You're not gonna change reality just by raging against it. I think protest is wonderful, but you're not gonna change the game. Number two, if you go in there and acquiesce, and, and then once you're in the job and don't rally to change it, you're also part of the problem. You need to find a way to make better ways of saying, if I were being interviewed, how would I wanna be interviewed? And what would I do that would make me nervous versus what would I do that would make me impressed? Some of those ways, form that into something that HR and or you or anybody who's interviewing can say, if this is a checklist, of questions, things, tasks, software they can do aside, and they have clear success criteria, or they gather enough data so you can make a reasonably educated inference and or decision about the candidate. Is the person good or not? Can they code? They sound like if they don't know how to code, they could learn to code very quickly, or they actually want to learn very quickly. You don't want to go in there and say, well, I, I can't change the world. I'm just gonna you know, play the game and play by the rules and not get played by it. That's also bad because you're perpetuating this horrible thing of whiteboard interviews. The third thing is just avoid them entirely, network. So don't go in whiteboard interviews to begin with. Don't go in tech interviews. Tech interviews are awful. They're a no-sum game. I'm concerned that I think it's great that everyone's saying it, but I don't want you to think that you should rally against whiteboard interviews. If you want a job, you have a mortgage, you have bills to pay, you wanna be successful, you wanna get an industry, deal with it. It's the reality we live in. I'm sorry, I know it's awful. I I hate it, but there's nothing you can do overnight by raging quitting against it. You can't judge a company just by their horrible interview process. I've worked for a lot of amazing companies, both as a contractor, as a consultant, as a full-time person. I have never been impressed with any of their interview processes, except for Accenture. Why? Because I controlled them. <laughs> Number two, somebody said in a tweet today that they think it's very frustrating that software developers feel that they can't say, I don't know. And I completely agree with that as well. I have been doing this for 15, 16 years. There are so many things I don't know. Every day I learn things and not just from smart mentors and gurus, but junior developers. They teach me things. They find things better. They have more energy. You might think I have energy, but some of these 20 year old millennials are amazing. They got so much energy. They learn so much stuff. They got all this free time that they use to learn. That's awesome. And every day there are things that I just don't know because software is an art. It's still not a confirmed craftsman. Not everything is automated. And it is okay to say, I don't know. And it's also the truth. You might not know now. You might not know in five minutes. You might not know for a whole day or a week, but eventually you'll know because you're awesome. You're a software developer. You're continuously learning and you're not always learning at a steady pace. Sometimes you're learning really, really fast and you have a rut and it's really hard and you're slowly making your way up the hill and that's okay because you don't know but you will know 
because you're awesome. And it is okay to say, I'll go figure it out, or I don't know, I don't even know how to figure it out. That's okay. It's not okay to say that in an interview. I failed an interview because I didn't know the method name for adding the model, the backbone. I meant, remember some of the method names. I actually remember the older version before it actually changed to the new version. And I was gonna Google it, but I didn't have my laptop open. And I didn't wanna open my laptop because this guy was being a jerk. They were interviewing, I kid you not, like 20 developers to 10 developers a day. They were exhausted, they had to code, and they were churning through people. And a lot of people were saying, oh, I know JavaScript, and they knew nothing. They were like, .NET or job developers for 20 years. .NET was writing it all for them. And when you ask them basic questions about how do you make a global variable versus not in JavaScript, but basically basic stuff they don't know. All these developers are so cynical for people like me, coming in confident, I know JavaScript, and like, oh yeah, I forgot that method, but I don't have Google open, I won't look. They interpret that as he's lying, he's wasting our time, and I am mad at that person. In turn, I fed on that negativity, and I got it. A lot of these things are negative. Yes, it's okay to say you don't know in a safe environment. If you don't work in a safe environment, yes, I don't know is bad and don't say it in job interview. Whiteboard interviews are awful. You should not like them. If you get in a company that does them, you should try to change them. But don't turn down jobs or potential contracts just because somebody does a whiteboard interview. Some people just don't know any better and it's your job to help them. So please don't limit your opportunities by doing that. I get it's awful, but that's the way the word works. I'm sorry, I didn't make it. I'm trying to change it. Number two, yes, it's completely okay to say you don't know. I say it all the time. There are things I don't know. I'm still learning every day. And hopefully you should too. You should feel safe around people that make you feel safe and make you feel comfortable and say, I don't no, teach me. Let's learn together. Like that should be how it is. But don't say that in a job interview. If you don't know, say it. Don't lie. Do some research. If the company's doing backbone, memorize the API. It's okay to say, I don't remember the exact method for map that underscore overrides for backbone. That's fine. God forbid you don't know that one call method, but do your due diligence, research the company, research what they're looking for, learn it. Your I don't know is about huge things. Like, what do you want to be in five years? I don't know, dude. Really? Like those kind of things. Not, how do you not do basic JavaScript? I don't know. Like, that's not good. That's my advice. Really drove me nuts. I agree with both of it, but I think it's dangerous to take it at face value, get fired up and blast potential opportunities. It could be really good for your career. Gone are the days that you stay at employers for 30 years. You could, there's people who've done it, but you got to think of some opportunities as perhaps stepping stones to better ones. So get your foot in the door, get your foot in another door if you're trying to change course to a completely different career or with a different group within a company. Just don't take that advice in a negative light and rage against the machine. Totally down with making change. So hopefully that makes you think, makes you realize it's a problem, you should fix it. It doesn't prevent you from getting opportunities. So again, my name is Jesse Warden. You got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see y'all tomorrow with more coding.